get into it. Coach Colin here. Oh, it's a happy day. It's a happy day. You know what? You know, after the attempt on President Trump's life, I I was very shaken up. I was like, what's going on? This is crazy. Glad he's okay. But there was still this lightness in my in my heart. And I realize now it was because Joe Scarborough didn't get to comment on it at all. And I was like, well, how did that happen? That's how it happened. Even MSNBC doesn't trust Joe Scarborough after Trump. First of all, they're, they're CNN right here. This is a CNN article. They're calling it Trump shooting. This is an assassination attempt. But MSNBC pulled the show off the air. Not just that. I'm going to be showing you Joe Scarborough because he's mad. He's very angry about it. So he has some words to NBC and their leadership. A little bit of a threatening tone as well. Then I'm going to be showing you the response from mainstream media across the board. And also I'm going to be showing you what Joe Rogan had to say about Joe Scarborough. And it all rings true, doesn't it? Oh, of course, of course, a little update for you guys on Joe Scarborough and how this whole career is going of his. I think he's going to be gone from this network pretty soon. This is a big statement for network leadership to make for Trump to get an assassination attempt on him. And then for M MSNBC to say we shouldn't have Joe Scarborough and his lovely wife there. I, th I think that's his wife, Mika. We shouldn't have them on this network for the day. We should pull this show off the air is absolutely incredible. Let's hear what Joe Scarborough actually has to say about this whole thing. He's shaken up. He doesn't understand. He's like, you guys told me to operate with zero integrity. And now all of a sudden, <laughs> now all of a sudden you don't trust me to have any integrity when Donald Trump has an assassination attempt on him? Oh my gosh, he's so surprised. Um, and um, and talk about what happened yesterday. Uh, we Ooh, a little too fast, sorry guys. Let me just slow that down for you real quick. We were told uh, in no uncertain terms on the Sunday evening that there was gonna be one news feed across all NBC News channels yesterday. The Today Show would be Lester Holt, other, other people that well, you worked with on Sunday. And that that was going to be one news feed across all NBC News channels, that we were going to stay as a network in breaking news mode throughout uh, all day yesterday. That did not happen. Uh, we don't know why that was ha didn't happen. Um, our team was not given a good answer as to why that didn't happen, but it didn't happen. We were also told it was going to happen throughout the day. And I, I guess after there was such a strong blowback about uh, yesterday morning, I guess they changed their plans. And so those plans changed as well. So it didn't. Um, and, uh, you know, we've talked about it uh, off the air. We'll talk about it on the air because we talk about everything on the air. Uh, we were very surprised. We were very disappointed. And if we had known that there wasn't going to be the one news feed uh, from NBC News across all NBC News channels, Willie, we obviously would have been in yesterday morning. Yeah, I was uh, here up early on Sunday morning uh, with NBC's coverage. Savannah and I uh, led the coverage on Sunday in the immediate aftermath, talking to eyewitnesses, talking to officials uh, about what happened. Obviously suited up and ready to go for yesterday morning on a, on a big morning and were uh, told that something else was going to be broadcast. So um, we are here today going through a lot, catching up mm -hmm. a little bit, but um, we want to yeah. be here for our audience and we, we know you trust us and we have ultimate respect for you guys. So. We are here today. I wish we'd been here yesterday. This, yeah, we we, we all wish we would have been here yesterday. It, it, uh, we we still are are would like to would like to figure out exactly why there wasn't that one news well, feed. And I think the reason why is this show began and continues 17 years later on being the place where you can go to have the hard conversations um, in a civil way. And so it seemed like now more than ever is a day, a time that we would like to be on. And I think our viewers agree with that. So we continue. Uh, we are five minutes past the top of the hour. No, and let me just say, <laughs> we... Now, Joe Scarborough goes on to say, before the clip ends, he goes, you know, if this happens again, they can find someone else to do this show, which is very, very interesting. 
That is how mad they are. But this is not just everything, guys. Let me show you. Main Street, it's so crazy. Because Joe Scarborough and Mika were told one thing. But everybody else in news knows something completely different. MSNBC lied to them. That's why they're saying we don't understand why there wasn't this one feed. They did this just to keep Joe Scarborough and Mika away from the studio for the day because it's those two that they don't trust. It's not all their guests. It's the fact that they're live on TV and they are not trusted by their own leadership to tell the truth and to say things in a proper way in regards to Donald Trump because those two have the most severe case of TDS. Listen to this, listen. In a scenario in which one of the show's stable of two dozen plus guests might make an inappropriate pulled Morning Joe, BC pulled Morning Joe off the air today. Instead, the network's yeah. airing breaking news coverage on the assassination attempt. According to CNN, MSNBC wanted to, quote, avoid a scenario in which one of the show's stable of two dozen plus guests might make an inappropriate comment on live television. Oh, my goodness. What do you make of that, Joe? Good Lord. I, I think for once, for once, MSNBC did something that was responsible. The, the bottom line is that Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski over and over again have compared Donald Trump to Hitler. Correct. Scarborough literally said on the air this year that Donald Trump, if reelected, will execute generals, execute journalists, execute political opponents. Gee, I wonder if that will incite somebody when you speak like that. Over and over again on that network, they have conducted themselves in a way that is beyond just giving an opinion and you're against Republicans, you're against this policy. That's fine. That's cable news these days. The fact that they got it so personal and compared this man to a fascist, to a racist, to all these things. I'm sorry. You have to pull that show permanently if you're yeah. really responsible <laughs> because they've gone way over the line at this point And it's unacceptable given where this country is in terms of the temperature, Stuart absolutely correct how crazy is that so in actuality and and again they're saying it's because of their two dozen guests who they could possibly have it's not just that it's them right this gentleman just referenced something that joe scarborough said which has been completely scrubbed again msnbc acting in their best interest scrubbed the clip from the internet where joe scarborough saying trump is going to execute people He's literally yelling at the camera. He's going to kill people. He's going to send in the brown shirts. I'm not going to have a job. Mainstream media, they're all, he's going to take away all of it. He was going absolutely nuts. So what do you think he's going to say in a case like this? So here, I have another perspective. Then we'll move on to Rogan talking about it a little bit. But another perspective, Sagar going in on this whole thing, what he thinks. There's a lot to be said about that. Of course, I'm listening to it that fast. I got to really look at this before I start. Sorry, guys. But for one of the bosses to say, we don't trust our own flagship anchors not to say something crazy is an insane thing to admit. Because what you're really saying is that we don't want the potential criticism of our flagship anchors in the time when it matters the most. So if that's true, then why should we want them on the air at all? If they can't be trusted in them, this is the thing too about news, and this is something I've learned a lot about doing this business. We do this show basically you know, all the time, every day, et cetera, and we're on call 24 hours. And uh, most of the time, nothing that important is happening. Like we're bringing the people the news, it's not earth shattering. But one of the reasons that you have to do that is because this is all about trust. This is me coming to you. I mean, I've been doing this job almost five years now uh, that some of you have been sticking with us between rising and breaking points. You've been watching the show almost every single day. At this point, we have a relationship, right? And so be, because you stuck with us now through all, all the ups and downs, not in just the big times, but in terms of uh, inflation or you know, any times we pick random or fun stories or whatever, you know, stuff that is going on. You know and you know a little bit about me and you have trust in me and you have trust in Crystal, Ryan and Emily and everybody else here at the show about this type of the uh, things that we have in place to both check ourselves, to check each other, to look about what's going on here, 
with the news to report it to you properly. And if you hear any opinions, especially in a fraught political moment, you're going to know they're well considered, that we're coming at it from the long perspective, and you could bake that in. And in fact, I would say it's times like now, uh, I'm not going to say you need us the most, but it's times like now where we feel most gratified because you have the most amount of uh, wanting to know what the hell is going on. And we feel very, very fortunate that you're willing to put your trust in us at that time, in the bad times, the good times, and also in the medium and the downtime. So whenever you take somebody off the air in a breaking news situation, at a time when news consumption is near an all, I mean, I, I, I don't have the data yet. I'm willing to bet this is an all-time high uh, for just the last couple of years. We take somebody off and you say you don't trust them to cover it then, that's actually an admission you should never trust them at all. That's really what I know the most about having done this job now for quite some time. And the sad thing now is I think they're right, is that they're obviously right in that Look at the way that Scarborough burned all of his credibility on Joe Biden, on saying he has you know, even more cogent than ever before, attacking the Wall Street Journal. And then three weeks later, admitting, saying, oh, yeah, maybe Joe Biden does need to drop out of the race after they can't cover it up anymore. And then back, back uh, you know, changing that, flip-flopping, saying, oh, no, no, he should stay. Amika Brzezinski saying, actually, I'm cool with him staying. But more so, think too about what's the story I just did, right? These guys, Dmitry Melhorn, these people are crazy. They think that, that Donald Trump and Putin staged a shooting uh, that came within inches of ending Trump's life for political benefit. That's what they think in the immediate aftermath. Those are the type of people who are on Morning Joe. Remember Donny Deutsch or whoever that guy is who claims that Trump is gonna come and kill him? They're nuts. Joy Reid, you know, over at MSNBC, she's locked her entire Twitter feed after the attempted assassination. Why? What happened, Joy? What'd you, what'd you tweet out there in the past that you're worried that people might come and look at? And I just think it's stunning. I mean, uh, Lawrence Tribe, he's a, he's a lawyer. He's somebody who's been on Morning Joe, elite Democrat, but propped up all throughout Russiagate. He literally tweeted out, you reap what you sow so, after the attempted assassination on Trump. Now, listen, I want to say this, too, because this is important. Man, all of those points beautifully said. And also, I know one of those points for fact because I went to Joe's Twitter for the first time, uh, Joy, her, her Twitter for the first time. I'm like, let me see what she actually talks about. She changed her name on Twitter to nope, period, and all the tweets are protected. So you cannot see these tweets unless you follow her. And she might even have some protections on that. And it's true. What did she say? What has she been saying? She probably said something directly after the assassination attempt. Whew, man, and and he and he's a hundred percent right. These people are crazy. MSNBC made the best decision. Now they just need to make another decision, which is just, just not have them on the air anymore. I mean, I honestly, I guess you know, I've I've talked about this before. These people, these talking heads, they're a necessary evil. That's why they get paid so much money. It's not that they do this hard journalistic work. It's not that they're up all night checking sources and doing this and that. They don't do that. People come to them. They say, is this verified? And the person who hands it to them says, yes. And they walk away and that's it. And then the next thing you know, they're screaming about Trump coming at night in dark trucks to pick you up and steal you from your house because you're a person of color. They say all sorts of wild, crazy things. So shout out to MB MSNBC for doing the right thing. Now, if you could just do that with Joy Reid and Rachel Maddow, <laughs> just take them all off the air for a day. Give the people a break. Let them let their minds heal a little bit from all of this nonsense. You're constantly pushing on them. And again, I did a video on Joe Scarborough. Joe Rogan destroys MSNBC host. Joe Scarborough, because Joe had a lot to say about him. Jimmy Dore was on his podcast. They both had a lot to say about them. I'll play a little bit of that because it it turns out to be true. You know, I, I've been doing a bunch of episodes on Joe hitting it on the head when it comes to certain predictions. And this has to be one of them. Check this out. The truth. Is it? F you. F if you can't handle it. It's six truth. in the morning. It's six in the morning. F, F you. This version of Biden intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. <laughs> Not a close second. I've known him Not for a close years. second. The Brzezinski's have known uh, him for 50 years. Uh, and we're if all fucking liars. Truth, uh, I wouldn't say it. Uh, <laughs> and these people say that Trump's a liar. That's a, uh, I mean, Trump's a huge bull bro, for sure. But this, we're this, in a Coen Brothers movie. Yeah, this is unbelievable. And so uh, how can, if you, 
Can you imagine the people? I don't know how many people watch that show, but forty-five people. To, can you imagine st- still tuning in after that? Yes, I, just, I would fucking wake and bake and let's go. Tell me about the world, Joe. Well, I used to watch. <laughs> I used to before I went to sleep. I used to uh, I would I would be I was just, I used to be a night owl when I was just a comedian before my show, and uh, so I like I would wait till three in the morning. I'd be up late. I'm like, oh, I can I can wait. I can watch Joe Scarborough before I go to bed. Morning Joe. So and the joke I used to do is I, I watch it before I go to bed because I like to go to bed angry. And uh, th- that uh, it, it, I don't know how anybody could watch that again after that. How could you could you and have any self respect unless it's you know you're you're high and you're enjoying it. You have to be high and enjoying it, and then it becomes high comedy. I mean because. It's so good. That was so good. <laughs> that was so good. That you, if you put that in a movie, people wouldn't buy it. I know. They would go, "Come on, no, that's not real. No and, one would do that. This is stupid. I'm, I've lost my and, disbelief." F your- you. He's going to tell his own audience. F you. If you don't believe Joe Biden's not the man. Yeah. If I was in a movie theater, my suspension of disbelief would right. go. Oh, come, come on. This I, is. I'm. That's why I was confused when I was looking. There's other videos I'm seeing that might have been a different time. And. No, 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 no. That was just a few weeks ago. No, no, no. This is saying right here, post a debate, and he's saying like they should replace. Oh, no, so after replace. the debate, it changes too. Oh, my That's God, part I'm of so the sorry. thing. Okay, okay. So that so was right yeah, before yeah, okay. the. Yeah, that was like weeks was before. Okay. No, no, that was weeks before the debate. Okay. He's saying that I'm like, can you believe the balls on these crazy people? balls? And so then after the debate, he does this 180, and yeah. there's all these videos that show him before and after. So the greatest 180 turnaround of all time. So if you go to the one up there with the black and white Joe, and then I just yes, that's the one. Just show that. It's only 30 seconds. Watch this. But I undersold him when I said he was cogent. Cogent. He's far beyond cogent. Oh, he's beyond. In fact, I think he's better than he's ever been. (laughs) This is a battle for the future of American democracy. (laughs) And now is a good time. In June, thank God. In June, and not October, in June, this is the last chance for Democrats to decide whether this man we've known and loved for a very long time (laughs) is up to the task. So that, <laughs> that's that's just a matter of weeks in between those two jokes. Yeah. F you. And I wouldn't say it if it wasn't the truth. Okay, now we can, thank God we can replace them. Well, here's my, I have a theory about this, by the way. Okay. So they've never. And this is exactly it. That's exactly why. MSNBC, I guess in their heads, they know how wild Joe Scarborough is, you know? And I hope this, and it probably won't be because maybe he's that deep into the rabbit hole, but I hope it's a lesson to Joe Scarborough. That you can't just go off the deep end constantly and think that people are going to trust you. And yeah, it ends up being people like me. But now you can see it's people like the leadership at his company as well. This is, It's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. And even as I'm doing this, I just type in Joe Scarborough rant Trump and many videos pop up. Here, let's let's just go. Let's just go through some of them to hear this guy's absolute raving nonsense. Listen to this. Like uh, double shilling and triple for him. checking and shilling for him and suggesting Sick. that somehow they're being biased, bending over backwards, treating him like a normal candidate. He's not a normal candidate. He is running to end American democracy as we know it. He's an authoritarian who a, a court uh, in, in Colorado two days ago ruled that that he led an insurrection against the United States government. He's charged with leading schemes to help overthrow the United States government. So so if they want to frame it uh, that way, that's fine. If, if you want to be fair, if you want to be fair, then you will frame this uh, as uh, Joe Biden being the candidate that supports American democracy and Donald Trump, a candidate who supports a new form of government here, this authoritarian. It's really that simple. And by the way, Reverend Allen, people go, oh, you can't compare him to past Nazi leaders. You can't compare him to this past Nazi leader or that past fascist leader because he hasn't done that. Well, what hasn't he done? He hasn't done the things that the American judicial system did not allow him to do last time, but may very well allow him to do this time or A judicial system that will be ignored by Donald Trump and ran over by Donald Trump to create the greatest constitutional crisis of our lifetimes. Just because he hasn't done it yet doesn't mean he won't do it when he gets a chance to do it. And if he is voted into office, then a lot of these people that are talking about literal or figurative or whatever the hell they're saying, you're going to look like idiots. Uh, because he will do, 
he will get away with, he will imprison, he will execute whoever he's allowed to imprison, execute, uh, 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 drive from the country. J just look at his past. It's not really hard to read. The only, again, the only thing that stood between him and the destruction of American democracy was the federal judiciary. No doubt about it. And, and Look at that. I didn't even plan that. I didn't even plan that. I just wrote in. I just went to the first video. And it's exactly, it's exactly what MSNBC is afraid of. That's exactly what they're afraid of. They're afraid that he's going to do what so many people in mainstream media have done, which is show no sympathy to a man who just almost got murdered within inches of death. And also, I will add, that type of rhetoric is the stuff that got Trump into the situation that he's in right now almost being killed this is exactly what did it absolutely ridiculous stuff oh my gosh and there's just so many videos uh, that's what i'm looking at right now you're usually looking at the camera there's just so many of him just ranting ranting and raving what if there's one person that takes all this serious like i'm, I'm showing it to you guys and we're all just like wow joe scarper what a ridiculous clown this guy is what about the people who watch this and they take it serious and they walk into their regular life. He's playing like the clowns behind him yeah. that all come in with their cyborg red ties <laughs> to an audience of one. Yep. And that makes the, his, his disrespectfulness toward the judge, but far more importantly, toward the court, toward the court system itself, all the more maddening and why if he if he if he were to do it again, he, he needs to be sent to jail. He needs to be sent to jail immediately. Just let's let's take a step back. And, and Judge Mershon has had to show restraint. While well, every day uh, you have a defendant going out and, and, and attacking him personally, suggesting that he's corrupt, suggesting that, that the court uh, system is rigged, uh, making it extraordinarily personal toward him and members of his family, and I suppose I, I wouldn't do it. I, I don't care who the, the defendant were. If, I, if, if I'm the judge, they're going to jail. And, and, and I would bring them in shackles day in and day out. I don't care if we we're a Democrat or Republican. <laughs> this guy, absolutely ridiculous. Joe Scarborough, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Rogan, Jimmy Dore hit the nail on the head. And I'm sure a lot of people already thought this. That's why there's so many videos him, of him just ranting like a crazy person, like a blue anon. If you uh, know about that term, but <laughs> amazing, amazing move by MSNBC to lie to Joe Scarborough and Mika and tell them, hey, we're there's going to be it's just going to be one feed. Don't even worry about it. Don't even show up to work today. <laughs> and then they're at home and they're like, wait a second. It's because they didn't want those two there. They didn't want those two there. That's why. Oh, my gosh. So somebody at the leadership of MSNBC feels exactly the way we do about Joe Scarborough. How about that? Anyways, guys, I just wanted to show that to you really quickly. I thought it was a funny little update really quick on what Joe was saying uh, and what Jimmy was saying about Joe Scarborough. Hit the nail on the head perfectly. Like, subscribe, turn on the notifications. Other than that, I'm out.